Hello, 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 and welcome back to Hunter Tuned. Today we're gonna mess with some stuff on the Mustang. Uh, I actually had a subscriber come up today and sell me some parts. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But I uh, figured I would ask you guys a quick, uh, your quick opinion on my converter. Uh, as you guys know, we did bust the transmission up pretty good in the car the last time we went out to the track. Uh, the drive shaft yoke had broken, and when the yoke broke, it kind of tweaked the uh, output shaft broke the output shaft in the transmission, which ended up breaking the tail housing, which ended up breaking the mount. So it didn't have a mount anymore on the back and then twisted the transmission inside the tunnel. The input shaft and oil pump were still hooked into the converter um, and the transmission wasn't like hanging, but it definitely was like twisted a little bit. Um, and I'm just wondering like, is the converter okay? I, I don't want to have downtime on the car I don't really want to send it back to PTC um, and like I said I mean it, it visually looks okay other than some stuff on the back so uh, if I take the converter we took it off of the uh, off of the engine and I just kind of flipped it around and this little uh, bushing right here was actually loose so this pretty much just adapts the back of the converter to accept the end of the crankshaft so this will slide into the crankshaft and uh, you know the end of the flywheel um this guy was a little bit loose so i put some goop on there and tighten it back up and it seems like it should be okay um <clears throat> but i don't know if you guys can tell on camera or not but these lines there's like lines all in the back of the converter here i'm not exactly sure what is up with them if it's a cause for concern or not um i don't know if you guys will be able to tell on camera or not but it looks like a bunch of like fluid was getting flung like anti-seize or something i actually just got a text from dusty bradford and i'm talking to him about it so it's kind of like the paint is just kind of peeling up that's what it looks like to me um you know maybe just from spinning or whatever the paint is kind of wearing off on the back um like i said just a little bit worried because we did bust the transmission up pretty good um, I don't want to throw the converter back in if it's got problems, but I also don't want to send it back and not be able to race this week. So I know if we did send it in uh, to PTC, we would have about a two week uh, dead time. So we would have about two, two added weeks on top of, uh, you know, getting the trans back and everything. And the transmission said that uh, it should be done by Tuesday of this week, Tuesday to Wednesday. So Thursday, I would like to have the car running and uh, ready to go. So anyways, we're gonna end up pulling the uh, intake manifold off of this thing because I ended up selling it to uh, another subscriber. Uh, so I'm gonna end up pulling the harnesses off and the fuel lines, the throttle body, I gotta unhook here, the intercooler pipe, unhook like the TPS wires, the throttle cable, all that kind of stuff. And then we are going to uh, remove this manifold and put on a new one. All right guys, so we got the uh, LS1 intake manifold. My buddy JP stopped out to check out the shop. <laughs> And uh, we got the old intake off. This is actually sold. I'm going to end up pulling my fuel rails off of it and um, selling the intake to a subscriber of mine. He actually is going to be sending me a check in the mail. And then when I receive that, I'm gonna be sending out the intake to him. But first I'm gonna to have to strip this intake down a little bit. Uh, I have to take the throttle body off and I'm gonna be reusing my idle air control valve and my throttle position sensor from this throttle body and I'm going to be putting it on a new throttle body and a new intake manifold setup. So I would like to use these rails that I have, but I think they're a little bit different design. These are the two bolt mounting um, rails and not the three bolt mounting rails. So like a truck and an LS1 and stuff like that, they all use two mounting holes for the fuel rails. So like these are a set of truck rails right here. They have two mounting holes on them and some LS engines uh, I think maybe like an LS6 and some other ones, they have three bolt holes for mounting the fuel rails. And well, without any more jibber jabber, I'm going to show you guys my new intake manifold that I picked up from LNS Customs. Um, he actually made a bunch of stuff for us and brought up my intake manifold and sold this to me. So huge shout out to him for uh, bringing this stuff up to the shop. He actually delivered it to me and uh, Gave me a pretty good price on the intake and throttle body, so uh, and it came with rails too, so I have an extra set of these uh, China rails. I also have to meet up with A21 Bravo at some point and give him a keychain that LNS Customs made him uh, on Fair Lady Z. If you guys haven't checked out A21 Bravo, he has a twin turbo 350Z that he's been building. He's local to me, 
and uh, I'm sure we're gonna be meeting up with him soon. I'll have to give him his keychain. Um, he also makes like a bunch of weird stuff, like not weird stuff, but he also makes a bunch of uh, like these are exhaust flange, um, you know, manifold flanges for building your own custom turbo manifolds. He gave me a set of those. He gave me a uh, Superman keychain that he made. Um, so that's pretty cool. He also gave me this lift plate and I've been actually meaning to pick one of these lift plates up for quite a while and he brought one up and surprised me with it. So that was pretty cool of him. Now we have a uh, valley cover lift plate to lift the LS engines uh, in and out of cars. This actually works a lot better for hoisting the uh, motors because you can literally just hook up the chain on the cherry picker to each of these holes here to uh, position the engine where you want it. And if you're picking up the trans with it, you probably hook on this one, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, that's really cool. We have a lift plate. Uh, this thing is beefy as shit. Super good quality there. He brought up a set of fuel rails with injectors because he knows huntertuned.com sells decapped fuel injectors. And if you guys wanna pick up a set of decapped injectors, I have a bunch of sets now in stock and you guys can pick them up. I, I feel like they're a pretty good price, uh, 175 bucks for a set of eight of them. Uh, and you can throw them right into your LS. They're already flow matched and uh, ready to go. I've sold over a hundred sets of these injectors guys and I have yet to have anybody complain I've had like one, one guy had a really small issue, but other than that, I've been pretty good at uh, making sure all these injectors are perfect when I send them out. And uh, a lot of people have been having really good luck with them. So if you guys are skeptical on buying a set of decapped injectors from me, whether they're for your Honda or for uh, your LS engine, um, you know, I wouldn't really look any further for anything up to like 700 horsepower. Uh, they work really good so here is my new intake manifold uh this is a i forget exactly what kind of knockoff manifold this is but it's the sheet metal style intake um and it's pretty much like eight individual throttle bodies in here it's a very big plenum uh i'll actually grab a flashlight here and show you guys the inside of this thing but it's huge opening um 102 millimeter uh throttle opening so it's goddamn ginormous and then as you guys can see in there hopefully uh, it's just a bunch of big, like pretty much individual throttle bodies that all go into the plenum there. So wide open airflow now for uh, the big boost on the Mustang. Hopefully this intake will give us a lot more high RPM power because if you guys don't know anything about the LS1 intake, the LS1 is actually one of the shittiest stock intakes you can run. This intake from a lot of dyno tests and a lot of buddies that I have uh, that have ran this style intake manifold, their power drops off right around 6,000 RPM. And when you're combining that with a ginormous turbo on a small displacement motor, 6,000 RPM is like just tickling, tickling the surface of this setup. So the cam I have, the big turbo, the small motor, it needs RPM. And this is not a good high RPM intake manifold. So like I said, that's why we're switching it up. And I'm hoping, hoping we can pick up some mile an hour and some ET at the track. Uh, but like I said, this throttle, comparatively to the new one, is dinky. This is like 3.75 outer diameter, and the new one is, um, i got to find it. I'm actually going to measure the outside diameter of it. So this is the new 102 millimeter throttle, uh, which is matched to this intake manifold, and it is a whopping four and a quarter outer diameter, it looks like. Uh, so I'm gonna have to get a new coupler to go from four and a quarter down to my three inch intercooler piping. Um, but comparatively, it is at least like a half inch bigger of a throttle body, which is fucking huge. Normally when you upgrade a throttle on a Honda, you go like 10 mil bigger, 10 millimeters, which is like, I don't even know, a fucking eighth inch or something small. So. Yeah, this one's 375. So that one's literally a half inch bigger throttle opening. And then behind this uh, throttle, like it necks way down. Like, so the inside diameter of this throttle body is just puny. And then as you look through the intake, it's just horrendous. So like, I don't know if you guys can see inside of there, but there's literally like post, posts, plural post, uh, sticking through the center there, which is just blocking airflow, blocking travel to the runners. And um, yeah, so, the runner length and the design of the manifold should hopefully help us out a little bit. I know a lot of guys that are going like in the eight second range with these LS motors, a lot of them don't have the stock intake. Some of them do, but I'm trying to run as fast as I can 
on the lowest amount of boost that I can because I feel like the more boost pressure you put to stuff, um, the easier they break. But if you can make the setup rev higher and make good power on lower boost, I feel like it's easier on the whole setup. It's easier on the motor, easier on just parts in general. So there's that. We have uh, the new set of rails here. Like I said, these are the three bolt design. So it has three mounting holes instead of the two. So these are gonna sit something like this. Um, I don't know if I'll like the chrome rails or if I wanna try to maybe make those black rails work. Um, or I'll maybe put these rails on my truck or something. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. So yeah, we'll have to swap the fittings over to go to my dash 10 feed line, dash six return, get the crossover. This actually comes with a crossover in it already. We have all new intake manifold gaskets and throttle body gaskets. We have uh, all the barb fittings to adapt to run to the blow off valve and the wastegate and um, the boost controller and stuff like that. We have all the vacuum lines. The only other thing on this intake manifold that I did not like is it comes with the, the gaskets and everything like that and the barb fittings, but there's no damn spot for a throttle cable bracket. So I don't know what you guys, if you guys run one of these sheet metal intakes, how you attach your throttle cable bracket, but there is no nowhere on this manifold for a throttle cable bracket to bolt on. So I don't know what I'm gonna do there. I'm half tempted to drill and tap the manifold for a couple bolts um, and run the bracket that I already have because I'm just running the stock Mustang throttle cable with a homemade bracket here. And I just had this bolted on the side of the uh, LS1 intake manifold. So maybe we'll be able to reuse this somehow but I don't know how else I'm going to attach the throttle cable bracket. So yeah, anyways, the new old intake is off um, and I'm gonna have to get the new coupler, like I was saying, and uh, some other small things to get that new manifold working. I just talked to Dusty Bradford and he said the converter should be fine. Uh, the, uh, the markings on the back are probably just from paint, uh, just the paint kind of peeling up from heat. So he said that it should be good to go. I don't really wanna get a different converter because I feel like this converter is good. I'm starting to finally figure the car out. So the converter is actually working fairly well. I thought it was too tight before, but we had a bunch of restriction on the motor. That's another thing with this intake manifold is it might actually pick up spool time too because it's not choking off restricted at the intake manifold. The turbo is gonna be able to breathe a lot better. So another thing that I did kind of want to mention to you guys is I've been having issues with the competition clutch that's been in and out of the CRX. It was in and out of my red EK hatch and just been having disengaging issues with it. So I actually, me and my girlfriend reached out to a couple companies last night and I'm trying to get a partial sponsorship for a new clutch for the purple car. So don't really want to run the competition anymore because of the disengaging properties it has. Uh, it's probably just this one because I've had good luck in the past with the comp clutches, but this one just seems like it does not disengage at high RPM uh, when I go to shift. So. Don't want to put it in the race car. Don't want to put it in the CRX because even the CRX had issues with disengaging. And I know it's a clutch issue because the red EK hatch, if you guys go back and watch the videos of the red EK at the drag strip, the first track day we went out, I think the car did 1120s and I shifted that bitch like a madman. Like it shifted perfectly. I wide open throttle shifted it. It went into gear perfectly and there was no issues at all other than the clutch just simply couldn't take the horsepower. It would slip the one-two shift. Uh, the clutch would, it would blow through. This is the clutch that was running that day. It's an XTD stage five clutch. I love this clutch. I sold it to T-Bag, or I didn't sell it to T-Bag. I gave it to T-Bag. And T-Bag had it in his car for a while. Then T-Bag sold his car, so he had kept the clutch out of it. And I got the clutch back from T-Bag. So this is the old XTD that was in the hatch that shifted perfectly, it just did, it didn't like 500 horsepower. It took like 350, 400 all day long, but not 400. So I'm gonna run this XTD clutch in the CRX because I know that this is a lightweight clutch, it disengages fast, and will work good for the all motor setup that's in this car. I also have a lightweight flywheel here. I don't think I'm going to use it um, just because I feel like I've heard horror stories of lightweight flywheels on on setups and you know just knocking the fucking bearings out of shit because the lightweight flywheel doesn't dampen vibrations as easily they rev up faster with them but they don't dampen the vibrations like they should uh, so anyways like i said the xtd stage 5 is going to go in this car 
And then I'm waiting to hear back from Action Clutch and the new eBay seller that sells twin disc clutches now. Grip Racing, I think it's called. They have a twin disc clutch for like 800 bucks, which is super cheap for a twin disc. Um, and I reached out to them and hopefully we'll hear back and hopefully we'll get uh, some sort of a deal on a clutch because money's a little bit tight trying to build all these damn cars. And um, I wanna get this thing up and going this year yet. So hopefully soon enough we'll have a clutch. We'll have everything ready to go to put all the damn cars back together and uh, finally go have some fun. Uh, that's probably gonna be it for today. Uh, we're gonna throw this thing on tomorrow. I'll probably film some more stuff and we'll probably take the block from the CRX into the machine shop as well. I wanna get the main bores uh, all checked to make sure they're not uh, out around or anything like that. And if they're not, we're gonna measure, remeasure the clearances, get a set of cheap bearings and throw the CRX back together. Uh, so that's all stuff that can be uh, up and coming. But I'm actually going to take all these injectors home and flow them up for a couple orders on the website. I have to go to Appleton and pick up another couple sets of injectors that a guy is giving me. And uh, yeah, so anyways, got some more stuff to do tonight. Maybe I'll film some more when I get home. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching and have a great night and a better tomorrow. We'll see you later.